You're listening to The Right Club Podcast, where the focus is all about helping you grow your real estate investment portfolio and live the life you want to live. Come grow with us and join our community at therightclub.com. And now your hosts, Sarah Larby and Alfonso Salemi. What is going on, Right Club Nation? It's Sarah Larby and Alfonso Salemi, another episode of The Right Club Podcast. You are in for a treat today. We have an amazing podcast with Mel and Dave Dupuy. They've got some huge numbers, a lot of management, uh, really, really great podcast. Uh, but uh, before we get to, to Mel and Dave, we want to let you guys know what's going on with, with us and with The Right Club. There's some amazing things in store. Probably heard us talk about it. Uh, I know I'm really excited about it. We can't stop talking about it. Our online community is like just ready. I'm an Italian, so like the water is boiling. We're just ready to throw the pasta in there to uh, to, to get it going. But um, yeah, like Sarah, well, like let let the listeners know a little bit about the online community and, and why they should be tapped in and, and getting ready for our launch. Yeah, absolutely. This is really cool because a lot of uh, people that are listening to this podcast are not necessarily in an area where they can go to Burlington and attend our events. And, you know, you might be in North Bay, like Mel and Dave, or you might be, you know, somewhere in BC or Nova Scotia. Like sometimes I, I have people from Nova Scotia reaching out and thank you for reaching out guys. And it is because of you that we're like, okay, there is so much more opportunity that we, and, and things that we can do to help you out there if you're not able to come to our club. And so this is going to be essentially everything that, that you want from networking to forums to finding off market deals. If you have an off market deal and you want to post it and you don't have a buyer's list yet, perfect spot to do that. Can, you know, figuring out who else is investing in your area, building your team. I mean, it's going to be a ton of great content, the ability for you guys to connect with one another. I'm super excited about it. I mean, it's, you know, like one of the things that we've been working on um, day in and day out for months because we want to make it interactive. We want to make it just, you know, that, that place that anywhere you are around Canada or where, you know, even if you're not in Canada, you can definitely participate. Um, you can get content at your fingertips. You can watch videos. You can, you know, really do anything that you need to do real estate related wise. Um, but there's also going to be some business information. There's entrepreneurial stuff. It's going to be more than real estate. It's going to be, I would say 80% focused on real estate. Um, but, uh, it's going to be like my, my go-to website, I think, uh, moving forward to, uh, to network and to connect and to learn. Um, so super excited about it. Yeah. And we, we've been getting feedback from so many, industry experts that have so much information and knowledge that they want to share. So it's really going to be a hub where you can go in and tap in and get, you know, um, some real practical advice on what that next step is. If you are stuck somewhere, or if you want to, you're not sure what direction or what strategy or, or what the next thing to do is, you're going to have like, you know, we want to connect thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people that have these experiences that have gone through before where at your fingertips, you're going to be able to to tap into this wealth of knowledge of all the people that are in, in this atmosphere. And, and, and it's, it's wild to think in a short period of time of, you know, three, three and a half years, all these different connections now that, you know, I've been able to tap into and meet because of the right club. Like the people that are in the rooms, you're like, wow, this is so amazing that this person has done it. I don't need to recreate it or struggle or keep hitting my head against the wall because I'm not sure I can find somebody. And now we want to make it even easier where, you have a directory. You can meet into these people. You can type in a keyword and you're going to find forums. You're going to find information, um, webinars, all that stuff. It's going to be amazing. Um, it's been a lot of work. I'm so excited to launch this because then once it gets going, then, then it's like just this beast of it going. But uh, yeah, we're ready to go. I think I've lost the rest of my hair as we've uh, as we've continued to, to build this. But uh, You know what the really cool thing is though, Alfonso? You could also from anywhere in the world, AKA Jamaica, where you just were, yes. access the site and, uh, and network and learn as well. You don't have to physically be here at the right club. So super excited, but guys, Mel and Dave Dupree from North Bay have over a hundred units. Um, they have just killed it in real estate investing. They're just doing amazing. They're so inspirational. Originally I met them, um, from Instagram, they were just posting some great content. And I'm like, you guys are really awesome. Do you want to be on my podcast, my worship invest podcast? And they did a great job. And then they came down to speak at one of our full day events at the right club. And 
Today, they are on our podcast and they're going to come back in May for the May 2020 event to speak as well. So check the rightclub.com out and go to the calendar section and you will see when that is. And, uh, and they're just, they're just amazing. I mean, they've got tons of great insight, tons of great knowledge. Um, they are like, you know, doing it. And, uh, and it's funny cause you know, uh, Dave and I, we say, you know, ready, fire, aim, cause sometimes we just go ahead and do it and then figure out later and it seems to work out for the most part but uh <laughs> it's it's, uh, it's it's really cool I'm, I'm excited about this podcast absolutely and such, such nice people such amazing people such a good spirit they're they're well in line with, with the, the 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 values and the morals of, of the right club so we really think you're going to enjoy this podcast so uh let's get to it all right let's do it all right welcome mel and dave dupuis thanks so much for uh, joining us on the podcast today sarah and i are Really excited to uh, to interview you and speak with you. I know you were on Sarah's podcast as well too, so I had a chance to listen to that. But uh, for those listeners, for the people that uh, maybe haven't met you or had the uh, were at the uh, the live event that you guys spoke at at the Right Club, why don't you give them a little quick little background about you know who you are, what you guys kind of do, and then uh, and then we'll get right into uh, plans and in the future as well too. Awesome. Sounds great. Well, firstly, thank you so much yes. for having us. We for are having big us, fans of the Right Club. So we're hey, you guys are doing uh, awesome really stuff. happy to, to be here and, and be with you guys. So thank you for having us. And uh, Dave and I, well, we're real estate investors. We, uh, we specialize in buying multifamily residences, solely owning them um, with none of our own money. So um, we're well known to have purchased the 12 properties in less than 12 months in 2017. We now have over 100 units um, and continuing to, to scale, of course. Yeah, and, and kind of our niche is, yeah, the, the uh, using other people's money, using other people's credit, and, and uh, you know, trying as much as possible to own, well, as of today, like, again, 100% of it, but not opposed to joint ventures, but uh, I, we're kind of greedy. We like to keep all the profit and all the, fi- <laughs> all the free finances and everything. That is really interesting because I, I have mixed feelings about JVs as well. And, um, and I'm just curious to know, like, in your opinion, what are the pros and cons of joint venturing and why did you choose to not go that route? Uh, yeah. And, and I, I just want to get it out there because some people think we're against, or I'm not against joint ventures. We'll probably do some, we've got something lined up. Uh, so I'm not a joint venture. I don't know what the word is there. Like <laughs> non <Naysayers> or anything. <laughs> no. <laughs> I just, uh, I don't know. I just, I like controlling the aspect, every aspect of the deal. Right. Um, and again, Mel and I have been doing it and I, and I know I'm getting petty, but sometimes like, I don't want to get into disagreement on flooring. I don't want to get into disagreement on when should we refi, you know, if I think the lift has already happened, then let's bring it to the bank. Let's pull the trigger. So it, it, the pros and cons I would say is that, is that Mel and I are a team. So we have, sometimes we don't always agree, but it's, it's in-house, you know what I mean? It's not uh, <laughs> it's just in the two of us that goes on, yeah, right? So. Li- literally in-house. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And I, I think ultimately it really depends what the goal is right so um some people they you know if they have zero credit um that kind of thing you know they may need to 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 go with the joint venture some people get stuck and and they think it's a great idea um it just depends what your goals are for us we we love again that there's you know it's just the two of us we get to keep 100 percent of the of the profit but of course what comes with that is also 100 percent of the expenses so people have to be ready for that as well so you know that when we talk about pros and cons of course there's pros and cons on both sides um some people will will say you cannot scale up as quickly um i would say i completely disagree yes you can we did um it's just you know knowing how to right and and for us it was at first we did on our own you know the the good good old burst strategy or the flip the self and after a while, you get stuck because you can only do that so many times till you buy more properties. And uh, once we discovered the magic of using other people's money um, to, you know, to make a win-win partnership and, and continue to scale, that's when we were able to explode our growth. Right on. So kind of, kind of walk us through that, that first, like, you know, the oh moment, like, you know, oh my God, why haven't we been doing Because I think a lot of real estate investors, once they start getting into it and then they start moving on to the third, fourth, you know, 10th projects, whatever it is. Like, I wish I would have been doing this like 10 years ago, right? Or I wish I would have started earlier. So what was that moment that kind of flipped the switch for you guys to say, okay, we need to be doing this or are we in doing it in a more secret <laughs> way as of right now? It, yeah, it, it literally was a, a flip the switch, you know, drop the mic moment. It was like, we were, we were in Florida, family holiday. And uh, it's funny because our, 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 one of our mortgage brokers have been telling us for years, do vendor take backs? I remember thinking like, 
that sounds like a back room type of, you know. Yeah, we're like, very uh, close minded. Yeah. Like, is that even legal? legal. I don't want to do that. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to get involved with the mafia and gangs and like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm just, you know. And um, and then yeah, we uh, rich dad poor dad on 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 holiday the audio book, and then all of a sudden it just literally clicked and we're like yeah Why? we're literally we had a private pool we're sitting there and we're you know relaxing with the kids and then we both kind of went when we were listening to it like oh my gosh so yeah so that and that was specific like day September and October like, okay. and then 2016 and then we just dived right in that's when 2017 uh that's when we bought the 12 and 12 so as soon as it clicked we just went you know to the races on it almost I think I needed somebody who was highly I needed to hear from somebody who was highly more successful than we were um to believe it you know because we kind of heard about it and all that and then once we heard it from him we're like okay wow this is how it works this is doable let's let's you know find out more about it and let's do this so that's really interesting so the the great thing is that you guys were both listening to it and both got on the bandwagon <laughs> at the same time which is also quite rare um in in relationships and in, in couples usually there's one that's uh, that's starting and then trying to bring the other one on board or vice versa so Amazing. Now, the other thing is a lot of people have analysis paralysis and they're like, well, should we really do this? And you guys just went all out. And like, how is that something that you just do just in general with your lives? You're just doers and action takers or how, you know, how did you avoid that whole analysis paralysis? And, and now, <laughs> yes, before, no. Like when I met Dave, Dave had the one rental I had from the one. So we both had a bit of a passion for real estate. Um, but we were, you know, like, okay, what happens if this and how do you do that? And so we were in that, in that stage where we didn't know if we should progress or not. Um, but I think it's once we had the confidence, you know, once we, once we invested in, in ourselves in learning how, you know, invested in mentors, that kind of thing. And we, we knew that, okay, we're ready to do this. Um, let's go. And now there's just no more stopping us. Like if one of us finds excuses, it's like, you know, he'll push me or I'll push him. And. That's the nice thing sometimes about doing it as a couple is that we're able to kind of, if I find him, he's being weak, I'll give him a push. And then sometimes it's going to be me who I'm like, well, I'm not sure. And he, he always thinks really big and, and yeah. And I think it's like before, again, the analysis paralysis, it's just, and I see it all the time now when we're talking to people and I, I try and shake him out of it. But again, you can't, you know, what's that? Uh, you can't lead a, you can lead a horse to, to water, but you can't force him to drink. Like they're so scared of the unknowns and it's like, guys, you don't need, you don't need to know everything before you get started. Just jump in. Like obviously not just jump in, but know enough to, to kind of make an educated decision, but people just need to know, well, what if, what if, what if, right. And it's like, well, deal with that when it comes, you know, like make an educated decision, buy a rental. And when the tenant doesn't pay you for the first time, you know, hopefully you've done some research, but deal with it, you know, stop being, stop not buying a place because you're going to have issues. Like just like anything else. Yeah. And just the reality is, you'll never know all the answers, right? No. That's, we still don't know all the answers. There's still some things that come up from time to time that we've never dealt with. And okay, well, let's deal with it, right? So and I think if you're committed to, to your goals, um, then you, know, you, you will push through whatever roadblock you're gonna get and you will get in real estate, right? Yeah, and you know, I wanted to touch upon something that you said, Mel, was you know, I needed someone else or someone highly more successful than me to, to see how they were doing it. But I think the first step in, doing anything, whether it's real estate investing, you know, health or, you know, travel, whatever that is, is believing that you can do it, right? So for you, it was seeing somebody else doing, well, hey, if they can do it, well, then I can do it. It's someone that you know, it's not somebody on TV that, oh, like they have all these things that you're like, well, wait, I, I, it's your, that belief is true, right? Because if you don't believe that you can actually close a deal, uh, lose the weight, you know, I don't know, do whatever that, that goal is, you're mm -hmm. not going to do it, right? And and I like what you said, Dave, was, you know, just, you got to deal with it. The stuff's going to come up. The, the crap is going to, it's not going to stop coming as, as experienced as we all get, as, as much as we learn, it's not going to stop Is Then you get better with dealing it and it stresses you less. And then there's new things that stress you out more. Exactly. As you scale, there's different problems, right? Yeah. And honestly, Alfonso, now it's this, okay, I can't even explain it. It's this weird, like eerie, when something goes bad and like, you know, when something happens, we didn't close a deal you know, the refis are taking long, whatever it is, or something, you know, you think at the time is catastrophic. Deep down now, we kind of look at each other and we get this little like Spider-Man tingly senses where it's like, every time this happens to us, we go from here to here, we just get better, or we find something or something happens where we improve, we get uh, leaner, meaner fighting machine, you know, and then long behold, a month goes by and we're like, oh, thank, you know, goodness that happened because now this is the reason why. So when bad things happen, 
and I'm not saying, you know, more morbidly bad things, but when, when things go wrong in business or something happens, it's just a speed bump. And we seem to, to come out smelling even rosier on the other side. So it's, it, it's weird. I, and it's not mind- that I like it, but I like it. No, but it <laughs> yeah. is, it's mindset as well, right? It's, I think yeah. it's the confidence of knowing, okay, this sucks. I'm not liking the situation, but I know that I will get through it. And I know that it's going to make me a better investor and it's going to explain my growth somehow. And, and it does, right? If you have that mindset and you're, again, it's, it's believing, like you said, right? You have to, you have to find that confidence to, okay, you know what, if there's nothing special about anybody else that's done it before, um, they've, you know, most people don't have connections. Most people start off with no money as well. Um, you just have to push through, push through and, and it almost gets easier in a sense once, you know, once you do. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and the other thing too, is as you're a new investor, a little problem actually seems like a big problem. And then, you know, you guys have a hundred properties. So a problem for you, that's just like, yeah, it's a problem. We'll overcome it could actually be catastrophic for somebody that's just starting out. So give me an example of like something that happened. Cause there's always going to be like ups and downs. Like I had to pay $20,000 to fix like some like black mold in an attic with some vermiculitic asbestos. Cause anyways, long story short, but that wasn't a big problem at that point in time, but it would have been horrible if it was my first investment property. Um, so tell us about like something that happened that could be a big problem, but and how you handled it and how it, it wasn't so bad after all. Yeah. And I'll just pick something from like day to day, like uh, rent day just went by. Right. Which I love rent day. I think we all do. And, and, and there's some, there's this one girl that's there and hasn't paid me in four months and the tenant board is taking forever. Um, like I'm six months out. So she, she already owes me about five or six grand. Um, and, and there's a few of those right going on with over hundred property, hundred doors. There's always stuff going on. Right. And back then for someone to not tell me $5,000, I, I would have, you know, like, not that I'm saying I enjoy this you problem, but, <laughs> <Let's be. laughs> but now it's like, okay, in the grand scheme of things, Dave, just let's stop the bleeding. Um, anyway, we're going to work out some cash for keys type thing. And back then there's no way my pride would have allowed me to do that. But now it's just bigger picture. You know, the, the, the system is broken. You have to deal with it the, the way it is and cash for keys and let's move on to the next thing. And then I'm not going to lose any sleep. I'm not going to recoup that money ever, but I'm not going to lose any sleep. Whereas before I would have probably said, I'm done with landlording, right? I'm done. We're not doing it again. I hate this, you know, and now it still sucks. Like, let's, let's not, let's be honest, but Hey, it comes with the territory, non-payment of rent and the, the, the tenant board taking forever to, to action anything. So I, if I give her a thousand bucks and she walks away and I'm out six as opposed to five, but it's, it's better than 10. Um, eh, I don't know. And that sounds terrible to say, to just pay someone for not pay for not paying their rent, but it, it comes with the territory. And, and now it's kind of just water off our back. And, and before then I would have well, I don't have any hair, but I would have pulled my hair out. You know what I mean? Like I would have been so stressed. <laughs> know what you mean, man. Know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Yeah. I think I saw you at the barber the other day. No. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> by choice. Yeah, um, we, we do this that, that attitude that the, again, that you've developed, like you said, I wouldn't have been able to do this before, but you had to develop into that person that you are now by those experiences that you went through now that you see these, these items. Right. So um, yeah. So again, you have to deal with that kind of stuff. So what does like on a, on a day-to-day basis, seriously, like you're always, in a hundred plus properties, you're managing those types of things. Now they're all under your umbrella. The buck stops at you guys. You, know, you guys have a team that works with you or how does that day to day, what do you guys go and do? What, how do you guys go and find that? Like, how, what does that machine look like? You know? Yes. Yeah, so, okay. It's so a great question. So, yeah. So, and I mean, we can kind of rewind. So at first, of course, it was just Dave and I, you know, and as we continued to grow, we got bottleneck. We just, we knew that if we wanted to continue to grow, we needed help to get it through. So um, now we do, we have a team um, to help us out. So, Quite honestly, we are pretty much fully hands off when it comes to the property management of everything. Um, you know, when you're asking about uh, Sarah, Sarah, when you mentioned about, you know, I didn't panic quite as much about the, you know, the 20 <laughs> grand it cost me and yes, it sucked. But, and I think that's the thing is that I don't even, you know, I don't even see it. I don't really think too much about it. Sometimes our, we have a director of operations. So he, he kind of takes care of, of the whole property management umbrella. Um, we all also have two um, virtual assistants from Mexico as well, they're and, and they're amazing. One of them, um, he does all the phone calls, he does all <laughs> the emails, and, and you think about how much time, you know, oh, we have a lot of tenants, how much time we just saved, right? Or, and it, it used to be our cell phones, which was kind of not really well structured because then it was always us, um, but now at least it goes to mainline and they can be filtered through. So quite frankly, that portion of it where hands off other than you know overall picture you know give me 
every Friday we ask our director, give me reports, whether, you know, what's our vacancy rate, what's our, you know, is there any non damage, on payment and rent, that kind of thing. So we can kind of, you know, lead them in that type of direction. Other than that, Dave and I, we're, we're mostly... Yeah, and, and taking... Mary, our other virtual assistant, she's kind of like uh, marketing. She, well, she's our communication officer. And yeah. she kind of works directly with Mel. Yeah, she helps our... me a lot with all the marketing and social media and, and my posts and all that kind of stuff. So she does a lot of work in that sense with us. And then Dave and I, we, we focus on our, our mentorship program and finding deals. Um, so that's how we're able it's to, fun. right? We get to do the fun stuff. So, But again, there's still fires, right? Like this morning, I opened up my email and, and Jim, our director of operations, like, oh, Dave, fire department got called last night at the 17 plex. The alarm went off. We have no idea. Here's a copy of the, the paperwork. So there's still stuff like that, right? You're still doing day-to-day -day stuff like that. But basically every day, come in, put out some fires, you know, with Jim and all that. Look at some deals, try and negotiate, talk some lend some private lenders, some investors, do some mentoring. And and the part that I love the most is looking at deals. I'm addicted to that. Like I just, when I find that cash cow, I'm just like, like a little kid in a candy store. I'm like, hey, let's lock up this deal, right? Like <laughs> The volume increases significantly <laughs> in the <yeah>. office. <laughs> it, it, it's funny because we have two residential, like we just bought this building. So our office is here and there's two residential tenants. I'm sure they probably know when I find a cash loaning deal because then I get all, woo. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So as you're acquiring more and more property, like who else are you going to need on your team? Like who's the next person that you need to say, okay, we need to bring this person in house. At some point you still need to keep scaling your own business. Yes. And I, and I think uh, like our director of operations, he's going to need someone, he's going to need an assistant. Maybe we'll get another virtual assistant or I don't need, I don't know if we need someone kind of in the flesh helping him out with different stuff, but definitely that probably another virtual assistant taking on different things. Uh, we have a financial controller, so she might need, uh, you know, some sort of assistant. Like if we start doing joint ventures, like right now we have four massive refinances at the bank. Um, and it's like, let's go, you know, I'm like, come on, let's go bank. And, and so I've got some deals that I'm trying to, you know, cool down, but then maybe we start doing joint ventures with those. And, and we have an assistant that deals strictly with the joint venture side of it. So mm -hmm. <laughs> We get so many good deals that I, I want to buy them all, but it's not possible sometimes, right? So right. it's like, hey, do I wholesale them? Do I, do I joint venture them? Like, uh, they make money. They're cash flowing deals, and there's there's lift. So I don't. And that's want the thing, right? When when we're on hold, say for in the refinance, well, the deals are gonna go, so we don't want to lose them. So in in this kind of case, yes, absolutely. Instead of having you know none of the pie, I rather have a piece of the pie, right? So yeah. so that's why you know yes. Typically, we prefer to solely purchase. However, when we are on hold in, in situations such as refi, because the banks are saying, hey, hang on, guys, don't give me <laughs> new deals. I'm trying to get this all sorted out. Um, and we don't want to let go of those cash flowing properties. So probably in, into that section to answer your question. Yeah. So, okay, so I have a lot of questions, but I want to start with the <laughs> financing piece. So like, are you going directly to the bank or are you working with a mortgage broker right now? Right now we're dealing with credit unions um, and we're also dealing with another more, like we, there's so many, it just depends on, like last year, the credit union kind of dried up on us, right? We had done a bunch of deals. We bought our new principal residence and they kind of said, ah, you know, let's hold off. Okay. So then we found a mortgage broker outside of Ottawa. He's been great. Now the credit union is doing good again. Then we have other private lenders, other places. So it, it, and then finally, again, I always call it the deal of the life cycle. So now with those refinances, we're bringing it back to like a, an A or B lender. So now we're going to be dealing with them. It's just, well, you know, sometimes you need private money. Sometimes you need the bank. Sometimes you need a credit union. Sometimes you need hard cash. Like it's just, there's so many moving parts. Uh, but yes, all of the above, we use them all the time. So <laughs> how, how did you figure out like where to go first? Was it like trial and error or was there somebody guiding you? I know you mentioned like you got, you know, like you read some books and did some of that stuff, but because it, it is like even just in the residential world as you're scaling up, like there's still a lot of stuff that you need to know. And so how did you guys learn it? And, and was it just by trial and error? And I mean, part of it, yeah, we went to the traditional banks at first until they said no. And then we would move on to the next until they would say no. And I think it's that thing is just because somebody says no, it doesn't mean never. It means no for them. They're not the only people out there that will lend you money. Right. Um, and I think once we realize like, okay, just because they say no, yeah. you know, well, how many people, people you know, there. did we just, did we just look at our city? Did we look at across Ontario? Did we look at across Canada, right? It's a, it's a huge world. There's money everywhere. Oh, there's, there's money in the States. And it's um, cool. Once you start knowing what you don't know, what you don't know, right. right. Uh, it is there's mu there's so much money everywhere. There's so many deals. It's just, yeah, I don't know. Like once you, once you have that razz on and you can see where money is, it's just like, wow, there's money everywhere.
Yeah. And Mel, you, you said it right too. Like you're going across Ontario and you're going to different credit unions and you're going to different banks and you're asking rather than just staying in North Bay and figuring out what the credit unions in North Bay or the banks in North Bay can only do. I think that's a big piece. And then the other th thing is like figure out when their year end is and their month end and you can definitely play around some of that stuff and what their quotas are. Um, so, you know, I, I'm glad you mentioned that. The only thing I would just say is like, you know, when you're shopping around, sometimes this is one of the things I like to, to work with a mortgage broker for. So they're pulling the paperwork and they're pulling the credit once and then they're shopping around for you rather than right. more legwork. But I, I can see how some of them might still be limited to all the different lenders and the relationships because some lenders may not work with mortgage brokers, right? So you Indeed. have to and I think asking some questions ahead of time before you start, because it is a lot of work, right? Of course, oh, go through yeah. and you don't want to have too many credit checks, of course, but even asking, you know, um, do you, are you open to creative financing? How do you feel about VTBs? That kind of thing. So if they say, yeah, no, or, you know, only loan to value to 70%, well, eh, I don't, you know, unless we have That's to. Great that you guys are asking ahead of time though, because, and before you start all that paperwork, oh, yeah. those questions about like, you know, how do you feel about JVs? How do you feel about VTBs? How do you feel about, you know, what's your loan to value ratios on some, you know, different examples of properties. I think that's key. If you come up with some questions then you guys can, it's like you're interviewing the lender <laughs> yourself. <laughs> and that's the well, thing. And it was almost a uh, change in the way we were thinking. Cause before we're like, Oh, I hope they accept us. And then we thought, wait a second, we're buying a lot of properties here. We have an attractive portfolio. We're continuing to scale. We need to, you know, that confidence you're talking about Falfonso. We need to be more confident. They should want our business, right? So it's almost changing that mind frame going, okay, wait a second. Like somebody out there will want our business. We have a great portfolio. We're continuing to scale. So let's make this a, you know, let's find somebody who, who, who sees that as well. Yeah. As, as you know, our company, like we've worked with probably over, we're, we're probably approaching a hundred JV partners, probably in the eighties, nice. nineties of actual joint venture partners that we've just got, like, it's essentially their, pro their money and, and, and their financing. Um, and yeah, at a certain point you do get capped out, but I, I remember the first few investors and they were just like, yeah, I'll invest in it. I'll be like, Oh my God, they're going to give us money. Uh, okay, let's not ask them, let's not ask them too many questions. Let's just, whatever they want, let's send them over. But now it's, it's almost the opposite because then we, we screen tenant buyers, right. To see if they can fit into our program, but it's also those partners, whether it's the bank, a private lender, uh, those types of people, if they want to be involved. And I think you touched upon it, Dave, when you're like, I want to be able to control like the flooring or the choices. And I think that's the parameters that you put in place when you're working with people. It's okay. These are my responsibilities. These are your responsibilities. You know, these are the ones we're going to talk about, but ultimately you guys are the ones calling the shots. It's your deals. You guys are finding them deciding, okay, this is going to cash flow or not. This is going to work or not. Right. So putting yeah. those parameters in place, the lenders obviously have big chunks of money. So what's like, What's the one thing that gets you, like you get you guys excited in the morning when you guys are going, okay, I'm going to go find a no deal. I'm going to go find a partner. You guys said maybe joint venture partners. Like what's that next horizon and uh, for, for, for Mel and Dave, like what's that new adventure? What's I just, um, the chase is always awesome. Right? Uh, like we have a goal right now of getting a thousand up to a thousand doors. How long do we have now? Yeah, still? For about four and a half four years, and a half years so. left. <laughs> for the, so five year goal. Uh, and, and again, we reversed engineered, so that's basically 180 per year, so 90 every six months. Um, and, and yeah, now I've got a bunch of deals under contract, big buildings here in the, in the, in the city and, and other places as well. So hoping to, to crush that 90 and 60 months already. Um, what I get excited about yeah. is when I wake up in the morning and I've got an email like, hey, I, heard a, I just heard the Sarah Lar Larrabee podcast and you know, I'd like to invest with you. Or hey, guys, I just heard the Right Club podcast, love to invest, or I've got a deal for you. And then it's just that I get that kind of like real estate high of, okay, I've got another investor. Okay. I've got another deal. Right. So that's what kind of, that's like my drug is, is finding a building that's amazing, finding someone um, that's willing to invest. And kind of like you said, Alfonso, like the chat that we have with the investors and I call you call it kind of your, uh, your different role. I call it like a lane. I'm like, okay, this is your lane, right? Like you, you're the money, you know, you're going to invest with us. I'm going to, I promise you a, a very sexy return. You're going to get it back. Here's our, here's our uh, track record. And then, but again, you're the money lane and then you're going to lend me the money that I'm going to do what I do over here. Right. And then just let me do my thing. You have a one year term, two year term, six months term, whatever it is, the money will be there and, and we'll have an awesome relationship and we'll do it again. So having that again, an interview. And if they say, well, no, I want to have, you know, a say in the building, this might not work out. Like let it, let me do me and you do you and let's stay in our lanes. Yeah. And I think <laughs> that's important establishing from the start, you know, how much say does somebody have? 
um, and making it fair, right? Is it, uh, and I think if it's laid out from the beginning, then everybody's on the same page and, and in agreement. Absolutely. I'm going to challenge you. Why, why a thousand units? Uh, we just, uh, cause we just, well, we have a hundred right over a hundred. We're like, you know what? Let's just, why not? Let's just 10 X it. Right. And let's just get it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. 10X, 10X. So 10X. is it, is it a certain income goal? Is it something that like a certain lifestyle? Cause, cause ultimately like my, my belief is we're all in real estate for something else other than real estate. Right. So like, what is that ultimate goal for you? So like once you hit that thousand dollars, you know, or a thousand, 1000 units, then what? And I think it's because, okay, so my goal, I think it's because people think it's outlandish, like, oh, really a thousand dollars, good luck, right? And when we said we want a hundred, they said the same thing, good luck. Or when we said we wanted, when Mel said she wanted 10 buildings when she was at four, uh, like what well, you wanted 10 by 40, right? I wanted or something. 10 by 40 people thought that was everybody ridiculous. would say like, like, why would you want that? Yeah. That's ridiculous. So I, I like, I like getting that. Oh, that's ridiculous. And then I'm kind of like, fine, I will do it then. You know, like it's, <laughs> I, I heard a good thing. You guys are, uh, you guys are fueled by the haterade. Yeah, I might steal that, that Alphonse. So I might awesome. steal that if you're okay with it. Um, but a hundred percent. So like now I like saying a thousand doors and people are like, no, you're, you're not getting it. Okay, fine. Let, let's challenge accepted. Right. And, and I it think just, it's just part of it is just the, the passion, right? Like it, it motivates me to have this huge goal. It motivates me to, to secure my children's future. Right. That I know that if, you know, something happens to us that my kids are okay. Like that is so, so important to me that no matter what, at least financially, they may not have their mom and, and dad, but at least financially, they'll be financially set, which is, right. you know, a, a big yeah. why for me. So, yeah, there's going to be a lot of money that comes with that. Um, and the thing, imagine we have three kids. So imagine how cool it'd be here. Here's 300 buildings for you. Here's three or 300 units for you, 300 units for you and 300 for you. Like, can I have a hundred? That's the difference that's left. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't even give me 50, eh? Yeah, <laughs> but I don't know. It's just, uh, why not? Right. And, and if we get 800 as opposed to a thousand, then, Hey, you know, how much money are we still going to have coming in every month? Right. So, I think that's part of it. Number. Yeah. I think that's part of it as well, Sarah, is that setting high goals requires massive action, right? So if I said, let's hit 200 units in five years from now, Okay, that's a lot less scary, a lot more feasible for us because we already have the hundred. You know, let's double it up. Um, but uh, it won't require as much action by having such a huge goal. It demands for us to also to next the amount of action we're taking, and and it, it drives us as well. It's supposed to be vocal about it. Now we kind of got to follow up with yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Right. right? So <laughs> right, right Club right. Nation, you make sure to to keep checking in with Mel and Dave. Make yeah. Sure you have like the clock, the ticker to see where. Yeah. You're right. And you know what? The thing is at the end of the day so let's say five years ago and i only and i'll say i only have 350 or i only have 600 units or i only have 800 whatever it ends up being um i'm that's pretty good right because i still took yeah. massive action and all that kind of stuff so i think that's my bigger mindset is that you know it's going to take massive action we might get to the thousand might surpass it we might get under but at the end of the day i know that it's going to be pretty high up there um because we're continuing to take that massive action very cool. Now, some people are probably wondering, listening to this, you know, what happens if the market down, you know, takes a dip or, you know, you've got tons of units and you're in North Bay. I think most of your units are, are up there. Um, like, I mean, obviously, and we all have answers because we've all thought about all of this and, and mitigated our risks. So how are you mitigating your risk and what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. And, and I won't get into specific numbers, but let's say your cash flow is here and, you know, the market takes a dip and, um, you don't get as high rents or whatever. And instead of being here, your cash flow goes here. Well, we have purchased buildings that, you know, with that in mind, the cash flow is high enough that, you know, if I have a couple hundred or a couple thousand dollars less every month, it sucks, but I, I'm not going to go belly up. The other thing too is, you know, if my building's worth 1 million one day and then it's worth 600,000 the next, um, yeah, again, that sucks. The market's going to correct itself eventually and come back up. But that whole time I'm still getting rent from the building on paper. It looks like less, but there's still going to be renters. Last time I found when the market got rough um, and when mortgage, like when, when, when things got tighter and all that, uh, what was that thing again with the, uh, yeah, the stress test with right. all that, whenever yeah. it gets tougher, you know, people complain and mortgage rates go up, which I hate, right? Again, you don't want to pay more for your mortgage, but I found the rents went up a lot too. Cause now people yes. couldn't buy. And, and I was like, wow, our, our rents really, I, I noticed it. So, yeah. and also the other part of it is that we also don't have to worry about 
our jobs, right? So if something happens, is that okay? Okay, yes. Yeah, so maybe you know, instead of making this amount per month, we'll we'll have a bit less. Of course, we have a lot of cushion, so we're okay. Um, but I don't have to worry about losing my job because I'm not firing myself, right? We don't have to worry about places closing or you know staff being laid off and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, so that's also something they have to remember with real estate. There's also a lot of benefits that, that, uh, you don't see the, you tend to forget that side of, of security. People yeah. think, oh, a job is so secure, but well, not really. Right. It's out of your control. I mean, with the vacancy rates that we have, like when I, when we look in the U S and they have vacancy rates of eight, nine, 10%, and we've got vacancy rates of, you know, in some areas, 1% or less or 2%, we have a different problem. So when somebody asks me, I'm like, my property is cash flow now. I'm like, they're probably, you know, it just means that more people are going to need to rent, more exactly. people are going to rent for longer, and it's probably going to push the market rents up. Absolutely. Uh, so, like, I don't really worry too much about it. Now, is every single tenant I have going to lose their jobs at the same time and not have to pay rent, and then we have to go to the board, and then all of a sudden it's going to take months and months and months to get them out? I mean, that could be the worst case scenario, but that's very slim that every single one that I have is going to lose their jobs. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, no uh, well said, Sarah. No, yeah, very well said. And, and I'm geared up. Like I, if it does happen in 2020, the recession in the States, like, anyway, I want to buy something in Florida. So <laughs> if it does happen, <laughs> bye, bye. At the end of the day, it's all, it's all your mindset. How, how are you going to deal with it? Are you going to, you know, go and back it, or are you going to make the best of it? So. Exactly. And this is strategy too. Like a flipper might be stuck a little bit if they're working on something and then all of a sudden the market dips at the time that they're about ready to sell. But if you're like a long-term, long-term buy and hold investor for cash flow, you can wave out, you know, ride out the waves. So speaking of, uh, of, you know, where, where it's, you know, about half, uh, half an hour into the podcast, I really want to talk about your book because you have a new book that you guys wrote, um, launched. I see it on Amazon. Can you tell us about that? Yeah. So I have it beside me here. Um, we wrote this, when was it last? I think it came 20, out. Yes, it came out last year. It came out in 2019. Um, it's it's a short book, so there's not a lot of pages. It's on easy purpose. to read. Yeah, not a lot of purpose on purpose. When we wrote it, there was about 300 pages, um, and then we just decided to cut it nice and short. We wanted it just to be enough to kind of get you started. Um, it doesn't have you know all the details about how to you know step by step on on the VTBs and that kind of thing. It's just a a good book to to get you started, get you moving. You know what we wish we knew when Mel and Dave were buying their first or second property. That's the kind of yes. book that we wrote. It did really well. Um, it's been um, it's been top uh, best number one Amazon bestseller quite a few times in uh, different categories: real estate, investing, and dreams. Um, actually, first. First day of the year, last day of the year, and and first day of Jan 2020 was bestseller as well. So that was uh, I was excited. About, what a way to finish the year! And then I log in the next day, and I'm like, oh, woohoo! What a way <laughs> to start That's the awesome. year. So, yeah, yeah, thank you. And you know what the cool part of like again, school was whatever for me. I wasn't a big fan in high school. There's no way in heck that any teacher in high school would have said Dave would have, you know, a best-selling book. A written, <laughs> and it's like, yes, that. But that being said, when it's a passion and you're passionate about it. Uh, there's no barrier and, and why not write a book, you know, and why not make it Amazon bestseller? So anyway, just anything's doable. That's awesome. Congratulations to both you guys. And that just goes to, to speak to, to the type of people and the spirit that you guys have that you want to share that information, that knowledge, and just exactly what you just said, Mel, is that I wish I would have known this when I started. And I know, you know, that was kind of maybe Sarah, when you started your podcast, right, was I wish I would have known this when I was going to real estate and, and all the, the research that they had and sharing that. And that's why we're, we're super pumped that, you know, you, you guys spoke already uh, on our full day event, um, I guess back in November, uh, the real fun. people doing real shit. Um, but uh, we're, we're super excited. So you're going to be speaking at our May event um, yeah. at the Right Club, the live event in Burlington, super pumped. And I think, you know, through the website, through through uh, the right club, people definitely have to reach out and find you guys. Just I've I've had so much fun, kind of like interviewing you, talking to you guys, and just that spirit of sharing. That's what the right club is really about, and that's why we love you know spotlighting and focusing in on on people just like you that are doing it, awesome. and now are encouraging others and inspiring others to do it as well too. Because like you said, like hey, if that person can do it, why can't I? So guys, <laughs> like if Mel and Dave and Sarah and Alfonso and like if we can do it. Like, come on, you got to go out there and you got to give it a shot at least and, and have a good reason if you don't want to at least, right? Very, Absolutely. Very well said. And you know what, Alfonso, you're making me think of Gary Vaynerchuk that says, if there's anyone, anyone in the world that looks like you or has done something that looks like you and talks like you or whatever, then there's no excuses. You should be able to do it. Like you're making me think exactly of him saying that. And it's, it's, it's 100% true. 
Yeah, absolutely. And you guys are really inspirational and uh, super excited to have you come back and speak. And guys, Right Club Nation, come out and meet Mel and Dave because uh, you you guys you know started and just went with it and literally not that long ago and you've accomplished so much in such a short amount of time that that's a huge inspiration. So congratulations. Thank you. And, and yes, Appreciate we look it. forward to, to, to meeting uh, so many people there. We met so. some cool people last time. Yeah. Like it, we left that week. I'm like, that, this was really worth it. Yeah, we it's met a some great, really cool it's people. well set up that everyone's friendly. Everybody's willing to share. Highly, highly recommend. Highly recommend it. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. So the next part of the podcast is a little game, our lightning round. So Alfonso and I will ask you some questions and you guys can uh, each give your own answer. You can do one combined, however you want to do it. Everybody gets the same questions. Are you ready? We're ready. All right. Number one, what is the best advice that you've ever received from another investor or at a networking event? Hmm. I'll go first on that one. I would say um, the advice was, and I think that's when I was kind of stuck, um, was s stop taking advice from everybody else around you and only take advice from those highly more successful than you currently are. And that kind of changed my, just the way I was thinking, right? Like the, naysayers. oh, you know, naysayers and why am I reaching so hard, you know, trying to achieve so much and that kind of thing. And then once I started talking with people highly more successful than I was, um, you know, they would say, no, Mel, push for it, go for it. And, and it just changed again, the way I was thinking and gave me that extra boost and, and, and boost in confidence. Great advice. Uh, for me, it would be exit strategy. Someone told me, okay, it's fun buying buildings and that, but if you don't know where you're going and how you're going to exit eventually, um, and then that, that's really stuck with me. And every, every time we buy a building with other people's money, other people's credit, I'm like, what's the exit here? How am I going to pay them back? How am I going to, and, and I, that's how people go belly up. That's how we saw a lot of people use an OPM go belly up. So exit strategy is huge for me. Yeah, great advice. Great advice. So question number two of the lightning round, when you guys are researching, buying your buildings, looking and all kinds of stuff, what is your favorite real estate investing resource to use? Hmm. Resource. I'll let you go. First. <laughs> Um, I would say, uh, and this is going to sound boring, but just the typical MLS and the, I, I just like, I just like finding deals and looking at real estate. Even if I know I'm not going to buy it, I just kind of like looking at buildings and seeing different price ranges, different markets. And for me, I mean, probably use via all I can think of their cash flow matrix, right? We kind of plug it in there and, and there's a four pillar check on it. And we know right away if the deal makes sense. And if we, especially cause we buy deals hundred percent finest. So they're hard to find um, because we do need to, cash flow, right? Yeah. We need to cash flow from day one, even when it's hundred percent finance. So I love being able to put in the numbers in it and it's like, okay, whoop, yes, it does make sense. And it calculates everything. It's underwritten the way the bank would. So, um, so I don't know, that's, that's my tool to know if it's a good one or not. Very cool. I just want to just, um, ask a quick question about MLS, like how percentage wise, how many of your deals have been on MLS that you found on MLS versus off market? Uh, probably less than we find more off market stuff. Um, but once in a while you'll find those gems that people like the building I'm in right now and the one beside us was on MLS for like eight, 10 months. I'm like, why isn't it going? And then finally I ran it through the numbers and I saw the bigger picture and I was like, okay, I see the exit strategy. Let's, let's put the offer in. And it wasn't going because it was an underperforming building, right? Not everybody from day so, one, everybody wants a cash flow from day one. It, you know, it was okay. It wasn't a, it wasn't great. Uh, but the potential that, you know, that force appreciation was and, so there. And people didn't ask the question, like this building is owner financed. The, the first, the owner holds the first mortgage or the previous owner, first mortgage. And I'm using someone's RSPs for the second. So again, none of our money. Nice. Nice. Awesome. Uh, question number three, what is the one attribute that has made you most successful? Probably. And I'll, I'll kind of dig deeper because, you know, you always hear, you know, not giving up and going for it and that kind of thing. And it is that, but for me it was even what was the force behind that was my why. Um, remembering my why was, was probably the biggest one, right? So, cause my why, which are, you know, of course my three children gave me the drive to push through, gave me the drive to, to reach out to people, gave me the drive to, you know, when I want to give up, to not give up. And when I had those roadblocks and, and, you know, non payment of rent or damaged properties when we're starting off, I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is horrible. Or when I couldn't get finance, I want institution and push through and keep asking people and anyhow so that was remembering my why gave me that push and, and motivation my uh mine's going to be an attribute and sometimes a weakness is sometimes i'm so gung-ho and i'm so 
impatient and I just want to do, do. Sometimes I do. And it's like, oh, okay, now we got to think about it. And uh, we're in this room now. So now we got to deal with it. So, <laughs> so that's kind of my attribute is uh, let's, let's go all out and we'll figure it out as we go or after. <laughs> so that's kind of my. Ready, fire, aim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then sometimes the do gets you in some do, do, right? So... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> Exactly. All right. All right. So let's wrap up the lightning round. Last question. We're recording this on a Sunday morning. What does a typical Sunday morning look like for, for Mel and Dave and, and your three children? Or, or what does that look like on a Sunday morning? Yeah. So usually we, we get up, the kids just kind of relax a little bit with Dave and I will, we'll go for a drive, you know, just a quick drive, go pick up some, some breakfast for the kids, uh, you know, look at a couple of properties, maybe on our way to Tim Hortons or McDonald's or whatever they want, uh, go back, have breakfast with the kiddos um then we work out and uh and then we kind of ask them what do you guys want to do today and it's it's uh we kind of plan our day whether it's go to movie or go play outside or you want to have a friend over or that kind of thing so and at some point in that day we're going to open up our laptop and, and crush a bit of business right because uh it's just all day every, well it's every day for us so but yeah no we'll, we'll, we'll we it's a work-life balance that works out great for us yeah working all the time but never working you know what i mean yeah, no, absolutely. It's, it's really interesting. So do you guys find, and this is just another question. It's not part of the lightning round, but I'm just curious because I could keep asking you guys questions. <laughs> do you ever find that like, because you're both in this and you're both married and you're, you've got like your whole life is real estate, like how do you separate it ever? Like, or do you find that sometimes it's just like so mixed together? That's just, that's just your life. Yeah, I don't, honestly, I don't think we separate it. Like the kids, like we're even playing the cash flow game from Robert Kiyosaki. That was our Saturday night last night. Like it's just, but they, and I, and I'll try and like, if they, if they never, if they don't want to do real estate when they're older, Hey, I'm not going to push you. Right. Um, but I think they see, you know, mom and dad have a uh, mom and dad, we go on, we go on trips, we do what we want, you know, like, Hey, I got it. I got an appointment today. Okay, cool. I don't have to call anyone to book any time off. I'm just going to take you. Like, I think they're starting to see that 14, 11 and four. And I think it's just, they understand, okay, we've got to crush some business, but then we're going to Toronto for the weekend and we're going to go to, we're going to stay in a nice, uh, the, the room that you can oversee the Jay stadium, right. For three nights straight. So they, like, they, they see the, the, the work and the reward, which I like, uh, you know, there's some hustle, but then there's also some compensation yeah, in the end for it. So we, we always say we work hard, but we play harder. Right. So exactly. it's, that, it's that balance. So, you know, we turn off our computers from Friday to Monday morning. No, um, you know, it'll be on off, but then again, you know, I can be home at 3.30 and see my kids get off the school bus. And, you know, when they have appointments, you know, I'll, I can stay with them. Or, you know, if they're sick, I'll say, like, it's just, it just makes it a, a different kind of lifestyle. I'm um, a bit more of a lifestyle. I, I think it's a, if anything, I think it's a gift. I think a lot of people don't speak about money en enough to their children. I think they're learning a lot, you know, just kind of setting up their own future, which, uh, what was it? Uh, <laughs> Caitlin once said to me, you know, I kind of would like to be my own boss because that way nobody can ever fire me. <laughs> I'm, like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, exactly. Great goal, kid. <laughs> That's hilarious. Exactly. Awesome. Just knowing that you have control of, of yourself, right? You never are putting your life in control of, you know, in the hands of somebody else. So. Yeah. Hopefully that is. Yeah. Choice. <laughs> control and choice. So, um, yeah. So if, uh, if the Right Club Nation wants to, uh, to get in touch with you guys or to, to learn a little bit more, how do they do that? Yes, so we are all over social media. Um, so mostly Instagram and Facebook and our username is at Investor Mel Dave. Um, so yeah, so reach out to us through there. We post every single day. We also have a, I didn't mention it earlier, we also have a uh, free masterclass that they can check out. Yeah. We talk a little bit more about how we do the creative financing. We talk about six different ways we do that. So if anybody's interested in that, it's www. 12 in 12 months.com. Um, and it's just short, it's about 20 minute video. So amazing. Yeah. If you had to give one final word of advice to the right club nation, what would it be? Stop thinking about it. Just do it. Jump in. That's, that's more than one word. Just do it. <laughs> Not with Nike. Oh, great. Now Nike's going to copyright me. <laughs> um, and for me, probably, be, you know, don't be afraid to seek out advice or seek out mentors or seek out to people. You know, it's like, somebody has a toothache they're not going to try to fix it themselves you're buying real estate why are you trying to do it by yourself why are not you reaching out so go out find somebody who you know you trust you like um and and learn from them grow from them and attend events like the right club that will yeah, be on, on in may there you go. <laughs> there's my last plug yeah. awesome. Awesome. Amazing. Mel, Dave, thank you so much for uh yeah. for joining us today it's been awesome looking forward to uh to continue the growing the, the relationship with the right club 
and uh, and helping more people and and you guys are, are the right people to 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 be a part of that so thank awesome. you so much thank you yeah. and you guys are just lovely we Absolutely. just love you guys so fun. thank you so much guys. thanks alfonso thanks sarah and thank you right club yes thank you uh, all right, Right Club Nation, what did you think of that episode? I'm super excited. I'm super excited to have them come out as well and speak because we could have gone and asked them tons more questions and we could have made this a two-hour podcast. I mean, they, there's so many things that we could have covered. We just can't cover everything. So we want to have them come and speak live. Um, and if you guys are not able to come out because you're in BC or you're in Montreal, um, we do record our or uh, shows or our events and they are going to be posted at the right club online community as well but uh what are your thoughts alfonso yeah you know what uh, two things that really stick out in my mind is that mel and dave are just just really nice genuine people that are you know figuring it out and have figured out a lot of things and are you know are excited to be challenged to figure out new things right and and that's like really that embodies that right club mentality is that nobody has all the answers Listen, I've been doing rent owns for almost six years, seven years. There's new things that come up all the time, right? And we're going out and figuring it out and discovering it with the Burr strategy. Now with, you know, Sarah Construction Development, all that kind of stuff. Nobody has the answers to every single question, but it's the ability to go past that next step, to break through that barrier, to go and get that knowledge and get that information. And, and they're so open to, to sharing what they know, but as, as well as acknowledging that they've worked with really smart people that have shared information with them that allowed them to kind of get to that next step. And uh, yeah, and I, I'm excited for May and they're going to be speaking on the stage and um, sharing their info. Um, it's crazy to think like, you know, oh, they had a hundred properties and you know, maybe some people are listening to this and going, oh my God, I never want a hundred properties. That sounds like crazy. And you don't have to, it's, it's what you want for yourself, that life of that, that you design, that you want that it's going to be yours and you'll be happy with. Right. And, and I got challenged recently to be like, what do you want your life to look like in X amount of years, three years, five years, 10 years, and start thinking in that mentality now. How do you want it to look like? Sometimes we get so bogged down in busyness and stress and all that kind of stuff, and we forget what's, important, what's not important. You know, Mel mentioned it a few times, her children, right? That you know, they can pick them up at the bus stop and, and they don't mind, you know, oh, it's working you know, every day, but never working kind of thing, right? So that's their design. That's the life that they've built. And it doesn't have to be the same for you, but really take the time to figure that out of what you want and then come to the right club and say, this is what I need. Here are the pieces that are going to help us grow and, and we're going to help you find those things. Right. So they're uh, yeah. Like they just, I, I wrote down here so many notes and it's like, you know, they just don't let anything stop them. Like it's going to be, it's not an, it's not a wall. It's, it's like a hurdle. It doesn't matter how tall or wide that wall is. There's a way around it, through it, over it. And there's going to be help people helping you over it and around it and through it. Right. So, um, yeah, I'm so excited that they're part of our atmosphere, part of the Right Club Nation. And uh, yeah, super excited to, to continue to work with them and grow and learn more from them as well. Absolutely. Alfonso, that was really well said. I, I second everything that you say. You know, Mel and Dave, thank you so much. You guys are great. And, uh, and thank you for everything that you do and, and help others uh, learn along the way too. So um, guys, if you haven't noticed yet, we are now on YouTube. So if you say, you know, maybe one day I'll, I'll check this out in video instead of audio, look at our YouTube channel and uh, all of our podcasts are on there now. I'm super excited. Um, my background's a little bit messier than, uh, than Alfonso's there, but, uh, <laughs> but it's, uh, I didn't move the camera. I'm not moving the camera. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> nice. Nice. Hey, Alfonso, it's always a pleasure and, uh, you know, super happy to do these podcasts with you, right? Club nation. Thank you for tuning in again this week. If you wanted to leave us a review and a rating, we would greatly, greatly appreciate it. And, uh, on that note, right? Club nation come grow with us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Right Club podcast and joining our community of real estate investors online at therightclub.com, where the focus is about helping you grow. We look forward to seeing you again next week. Thanks from your hosts, Sarah Larby and Alfonso Salemi.